account. Abstracted account is a contract. Contract is the king. What we try to abstract, we abstract validation. Uh, we have a uh, account expose a validation method, which allows us a different type of uh, validation, as we will see shortly. We abstract uh, execution, like execute batch if you want something else, instead of a single transaction. And we have abstract gas payment, so that an account can pay for itself if it likes, but if not, it can use a, a paymaster contract. Uh, this is the basic component of uh, ERC 4337. Maybe I should start with a small question. How many people went into an introduction to 4337? Okay, just a few. I'll keep it. <laughs> I'll continue. We don't have much time for that. So the main component we have is, first of all, there's the account, the contract account. Uh, this is the contract that exposed the account. Its address is the address you own and you control it, and not only by signature, but it could be by other methods. Uh, the second component is the entry point. This is the main component we have to uh, orchestrate all the transactions to our accounts. And as I said, there are paymasters, which are contracts which uh, are responsible for paying the gas for transactions. A user operation is the term we use for a transaction. Whenever you see the term user operation, think of uh, a transaction on steroids, a transaction to a, a user, uh, to, a, to our account are called the user operations. And under the hood, we have uh, bundlers, which are the block builders, which work with the memory pool. Let's see what it takes, uh, uh, the life cycle of user operation. I, as a user, have an application. The application creates, I want to send a transaction to the network. I use some wallet. Contra uh, wallet, this is the uh, wallet on my uh, device, a Chrome extension or whatever, and I create a transaction, a user operation. Just like normal, normal transaction, it is sent into a, memo, a mempool. Uh, the mempool is a mempool of user operation. It's not a mempool of transaction, but it behaves the same. It is decentralized. Then a bundler, one of the bundlers in the network, just like one of the nodes, pick up this transaction along with other transactions in order to create a bundle. Before it can put this transaction on chain, it need to validate it. With normal Ethereum transaction, validation is simple. You validate the signature, it's an ECDSSI signature, and you validate that it has enough gas. But we, as we said, we abstracted all that. We allow a lot of new things uh, with our transactions. So the validation is done by making a contract call. It make a call, uh, a simulation call into the entry point. The simulation call validates uh, the account. The account code itself validates itself. And if there is a paymaster, the, valid, uh, the uh, paymaster validates that it indeed agrees to pay for this transaction. Once it is validated, it is put into a, a, into a bundle, a set of transactions that are put together on chain, and we execute. When we execute, again, the validation is done on chain to validate that indeed the transaction, even when it ran on chain, accepts and pays uh, this bundler. And after it uh, validates, it performs the execution, which is the execution of that uh, transaction. And then it put into the chain just like any other transaction. The outcome of, a bundler, of the bundler is a tr an Ethereum transaction. Because one thing I didn't say is that the whole idea is that we run on Ethereum network as it is. We couldn't introduce a new type of transaction on chain. So we introduced a mechanism off chain and a contract entry point, and we submit a transaction, uh, one transaction on chain, which is an entire bundle of user operations. Uh, I, I want to emphasize the difference between transaction and uh, user operation. This is an account, an EOA account. It is secured, as I said, by ECDSA, uh, mathematical. Uh, formula to calculate the public key from the uh, private key to make sure it is uh, correct. It has a wallet. The wallet can do exactly one thing, approve. It can approve this transaction uh, and submit it on chain. It is sent to the, mempool, uh, to the mempool and then a block builder put it on chain. The mempool is there to make sure that uh, there's no denial of service, nobody attempt to attack the network. It is distributed all over so nobody can censor you. 
the block builder, again, verify the signature, verify you have enough balance, and add it to a block. With account abstraction, we have our account, but account is a contract. So the validation is its code. It can do whatever it likes. We'll give several examples later of what do we mean by validated by code. What can we do? The wallet, again, it's a software component, but instead of only approving by ECDSA, it can do many other things. Um, then we use a mempool equivalent to the standard mempool to put it uh, on, uh, and then bundlers collect it, perform the validation, and put it on chain. So in terms of uh, incentives and the network flow, it is quite similar to existing transaction, except for the fact that we can validate it using code. Uh, okay, what is in an account? What is an account contract? Account contract, we provide the basic uh, account. You see it's a single method called user, uh, validate user operation, which receive uh, the user operation, and it can validate whatever fields it need from it. Uh, the simplest thing it can do is validate the signature and validate the nonce. So we provide a mechanism that validate the nonce, uh, call a hook for the application to perform a signature validation, and it need, and it also told how much it need to pay. If there is no payment, it has to pay for the transaction by itself. So it has to pay uh, in advance for the max possible cost of the transaction. Uh, in, in case of failure, it, it reports that it failed through the return value. Uh, this is the basic account that uh, we inherit. This is an example of a specific account we provide in our repo repository. You see we validate the nonce. It's a simpler, we have a nonce, we increment it by one and we'll make sure that the user operation contains that nonce, which basically replicate the uh, nonce mechanism that it's used by uh, EOA accounts, incremented by one. You can put another mechanism that will, for example, allow you parallel transactions. And this is a, a sample of validate signatures, which uses open Zeppelin uh, signature check, which again, simulate a normal transaction, normal EOA account. The execution method of an account, the account has to be able to execute. So it's a basic, it receives a destination a value and a call and it executes it. It is possible uh, to execute a batch. So also created a method uh, to execute a batch. And again, an account can use other execution mechanism if it likes. Uh, if you want to create a paymaster, a paymaster is a contract that uh, will pay for the transaction. The simplest example of a paymaster is a paymaster that pay by tokens. So when it, it, its execution is a, sorry, when its validation method is called, it validates that the user agrees to pay with tokens, which means the paymaster extracts tokens from the user, transfer them to, to itself. It is called once again after the transaction is completed so that it can repay the user with the excess amount. This, again, this is not the base paymaster. It's a token paymaster, which is a, a concrete example of a paymaster. Now, what, what can we do? Maybe you should start and say, what, what can we do with that? So I like the basic uh, two examples uh, uh, for uh, authentication with account abstraction. Think of it that the ECDSA model is a one model fit all, is that you have to approve each transaction. Think about gaming. In, when you're using a game, you have a single or one or two targets, and you, it's really annoying to accept and approve each transaction, so you would prefer to have in your account something like a session key. Like, for this specific destination, for the next half an hour, I don't want to approve anything. The most that will happen if my browser is compromised is one hit into the game. It doesn't interfere with my tokens or with anything else. So session keys is a kind of uh, validation that is used for a very low security mechanism in my account. I will not use them always. For games, yes. On the other end, think of an account that belongs to a corporate. The corporate account has different signers, different roles, like, you know, the legal are allowed to vote and allowed to execute in a DAO, 
And uh, I don't know, the CFO is allowed to move money and there is the uh, accounting department which allows to put uh, out uh, salaries. Each one is different. So you could have an account with different uh, security mechanism. It's, again, it is a single account. You can uh, have different mechanism. I, want to I wanted to put several examples of uh, paymasters here too, but I forgot to put it into the slide. I gave you one example of token paymasters. The other uh, example is a, what we call a sponsor paymaster. It's not, it's not a specific example, but think of an application that you want to pay for the users, for your users. If a user accesses your account, even deploy its own account, you want to pay for that. It's small money and you want to attach this user to you, so you want to pay for it. You don't send money to the user. You put a paymaster which will allow the user to use your uh, destination. So it's a specific kind of a paymaster for that. If you want to see other use cases, I put up a link. We spent over an hour just explaining different use cases that you can do uh, back in Bogota. Uh, okay. Now, we are all builders and you want to use it. So, and the main thing uh, we need to build, we need first, okay, we need to build an account to build a feature into it. But then we also need to add this uh, account uh, UX to support it. And this, uh, this is a, a wallet, a wallet uh, to support this uh, account. So what we did, we created a, a boilerplate for a browser extension. We call it trampoline because it gives you a, a jump start into, uh, you have QR code at the end with the link to everything. Uh, trampoline, uh, is a sample uh, browser extension created by a helper from here for Gravit. Uh, it is based on Tallyho, that is a browser extension, but it is tailored for uh, creating a, an account abstraction. With that, if you think of, account of something you want to do with account abstraction, uh, you can uh, you can add it. it uh, so. I uh, think, let's say you want to add some different kind of uh, signature check. So yes, you need to take, uh, you create an account. So the best thing, uh, thing you can do, you, could, you take a simple account, or it's basically a space account, and you replace the validate signature function. Now you have an account that uses a different signature check mechanism. But it is not enough, you need a UX to put this value in. So you take the trampoline, uh, within the trampoline, you have uh, the account API, and uh, you add this UX into a in the trampoline. The trampoline uh, gives you a way to do some onboarding, like collecting information from the user. Like if you want to find a clever way to use an email as a signature check, it's great. Here you will collect the user's email or whatever. Uh, then when you handle a transaction. This is what it will, uh, will be called to process a transaction. And there's also a hook for mechanism in case users only ask for signing. So uh, the account API need to provide several basic methods. Uh, it is called during onboarding. The first is a create the init code, like uh, the constructor call to create your account because part of the idea is that you don't need some other mechanism to create the account. The account is created using account abstraction. Like with MetaMask, you don't think of it. You never create an account. It is always there. It is never on chain. But with account abstraction, the first transaction to send usually is the one to create the, uh, the account contract itself. Yes, it means that the first transaction costs a little more. But other than that, it's a normal transaction. So you create the co uh, constructor code for the trampoline to know how to use. You need to provide it uh, three more functions. One is to handle the nonce. One is, of course, to, to create the execution function and a way to, uh, to create a signature, which uh, uh, is parsed by your account. And then uh, during onboarding, okay, you have the onboarding component. The onboarding component bring up a custom UI to collect information from the user, and at the end, Bring the hooks uh, to create the account. And uh, if we look, we'll see a transaction in, in a moment, but uh, uh, 
the user send a send transaction, a normal uh, send transaction from its application through uh, Web uh, 3JS or through uh, Ethers or directly it send a th send transaction. This transaction is, 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 is uh, captured by uh, the wallet, the trampoline wallet. It calls the uh, transaction component. It can display uh, information to the user. And uh, then when it completes the transaction, uh, uh, it continues, it creates a user operation, the account abstraction transaction, gets signed and uh, sent on chain. Uh, I wanted to bring a, a demo and I, it was appalling the status of the internet. So I recorded one about half an hour ago. Okay, so I start, I open a, my browser extension, a, I disable developer mode, I enable developer mode because it has to be a developer mode and disable MetaMask because it can't work in, uh, together with MetaMask, it replaces MetaMask. And then I load uh, the folder after I, uh, okay, I didn't copy the screen, I started the, the, uh, it locally and then I loaded the source into MetaMask. And then, uh, and then it pops up uh, a screen. It asks me to create an account. This is still the trampoline creates. And then the trampoline uh, opens up a custom UX. This sample uh, didn't do anything in this custom UX, so uh, it's an empty screen. Uh, and then uh, it continues. Now it creates in memory the account. The account is created. He's in an, uh, it has an address. And uh, it will update. It doesn't have balance and it is not deployed on a on, uh, network uh, yet. So uh, I don't have a paymaster, so I switch to another account and I sent uh, some uh, girl ETH into that account. Sorry, I didn't have time to edit it, so we'll have to wait in real time for girl to mine it. Um, Okay, this is my account and I have a balance. Now I want to uh, execute some transaction. I could deploy it from here, but I wanted to sh uh, deploy it as part of a transaction. So uh, I don't have an application here, so I opened the uh, Etherscan on some uh, well-known uh, sample application. This is the greeter of Open Zeppelin, and it has a set greeting method. So I connect a uh, the trampoline, and uh, here it shows it's MetaMask because the, uh, this is how Etherscan connects to a browser extension. I think they are all called. Okay, I, I get a connection request for the application, so I will connect to it. Again, there is a custom screen that I didn't use in this uh, sample. I have a better sample that uses fingerprint, but I'm sorry I didn't have that <laughs> to put it uh, on chain. Uh, this, is, this screen, is, this is my uh, bundler. This shows the transaction that it sent. I ran it locally. And uh, in a few seconds, it will show that the transaction got mined. It sent through the bundle. And now if we look, we will be able to see this transaction. Let's move. Uh, this is the transaction. Uh, it goes, not from my account, it's, it's a transaction from the bundler to the entry point and it's in, internally it uh, is a transaction that uh, handles uh, the, 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 transa the, the user operation of this account. Oh, it starts all over. Okay, as I said, I don't have much time, so if you <laughs> want, if you have more questions, you'll have to uh, come over, and approach me and, uh, and ask. Okay, thank you.